everyone and good afternoon and welcome to another Periscope edition of Alexandra Mayer's Live. Now today's webcast is going to be um, probably kind of interesting to people who work in the tech field, especially women who work in the tech field. And the reason that I say that is because I actually communicate on a fairly routine basis with women in the Silicon Valley area or uh, who might live in the Seattle, Washington area who work for the various software companies and tech development companies. And something that I frequently hear from these women is that they have such a hard time finding a relationship with someone who's in their world, in their industry. And oftentimes, I've been told that the men in their industry are incredibly misogynistic and that that misogynistic attitude seems to be on the rise, especially over the past few years. So um, considering that I've been an adult entertainment industry independent investigative blogger for a long time, I started to put two and two together when it came to this rising attitude of misogyny when it comes to men who work in the technological field, especially in the Silicon Valley area. Um, when you think about the rise of the internet, when you think about how the internet has progressed over the years, one of the driving forces that has pushed technology, especially when it comes to video technology, um, things like YouTube, HD video, um, even the tube sites when it comes to the porn industry, what's pushed that is the porn. People have had the desire to be able to more easily attain these adult videos, be able to see it in higher quality, crisper quality. Uh, the porn industry really has essentially driven the progression of media distribution online. It's very, it's very interesting symbiotic relationship. Actually, in the past, the um, Computer and Electronics Expo used to coincide with the Adult Entertainment Expo. For some reason, that split. And um, back when I was friends with someone who I used to do a webcast with, Diana, she and I used to theorize that part of the reason behind that separation had to do with so many of the guys who initially went to the expo to check out computers and electronics were getting themselves in trouble when it came to um, seeing some of the porn stars privately. Yeah, because whenever you see a porn star privately, you do have to remember that more often than not, there will be a pimp involved. And that is what we are going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how the label or the labels of geek, techie, and nerd have become a bit of a highly promoted subculture within the adult entertainment industry. Um, and from my perspective, at least, two men who, from what I've read on the Real Porn WikiLeaks, got into some sort of an altercation over the, week, over the weekend at the Adult Entertainment Expo. And these two particular men, ironically, are the two men who have created and who have promoted and really pushed two genres of pornography that highly appeal to quote unquote geeks or techies or nerds. And I'm talking about Axel Braun and Kevin Moore. Apparently over the weekend, and again, you can go to therealpornwikileaks.com to check out this little news item, but apparently Axel Braun decided to, you know, stretch his muscles and try to go after Kevin Moore. Um, I really don't have too high of an opinion of Axel Braun, but I definitely don't ha have a high opinion of Kevin Moore, especially considering a old interview I found about him that definitely made it known that he embodies serious 
issues when it comes to blacks and African Americans. But um, violence is never the answer, especially when you look at it from a legal standpoint. So Axel LeBron, if he did indeed a try, you know, try to attack Kevin Moore, he shouldn't have done that. But if Axel LeBron ever sees this, one thing I do want to say is don't let the persona that Kevin Moore projects of being this unassuming, nerdy, geeky, tech kind of guy fool you. Because that's just a mask that he wears. Absolutely, from my perspective, especially considering quite a few forum posts that I was able to uncover of his that date back to what I can find the year 2000. The best predators in life figure out the best masks to wear. Okay? Um, and if you're a super predator, you're going to come across as being incredibly unassuming, very charismatic, very gentle, very, oh, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm just a little sheep. Bah. Okay? Um, I firmly do believe that Kevin Moore is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Yeah. So let, let me get more into what I want to talk about. Um, Kevin Moore, what he did with his movie that he's been fairly celebrated for, a movie called The Hooker Experience, when I watched that thing, it, it highly reminded me of Joss Whedon's television series, The Dollhouse, which stars Eliza Dushku. And for those of you who aren't familiar with The Dollhouse or what the series was about, it was a, it was a sci-fi series and it had to do with these women or, or men who um, got in trouble in some way or, or in some cases just fell into trouble. It might not have been legal trouble, but they were recruited by this company called The Dollhouse. And they were basically um, wiped completely mentally of all of all their memory, but their memory was saved, ironically, on a hard drive. And new personas and new memories were uploaded into their mind. And every week, the dolls or, or the individuals that the series centered around went on different adventures. Sometimes the dolls were uh, uploaded with a persona to be a uh, private investigator. Other times the dolls were uploaded with a persona to be a pop star who was an undercover bodyguard for another pop star. And in some of the episodes, the dolls were uploaded with a persona that was incredibly desirable to a wealthy individual, male or female. In other words, they were prostituted or pimped out to wealthy individuals in certain situations on the show. But um, it seems to me that Kevin Moore is truly only a few steps away from creating agencies or organizations or situations that are very close to the storyline of Joss Whedon's television show, The Dollhouse. Um, hopefully later this week, because I do have a lot of other things to do when it comes to my regular work and my regular job, so I am behind. But I do need to upload my video um, review of The Hooker Experience, because that thing, um, that's a movie that I think people need to know about, not even so much as consumers, but women need to know about how closely intertwined the pornographic industry is 
with the illegal escort and prostitution agencies and the individuals who run them, the pimps and the madams sometimes, but more often than not, it's males behind these ent entities, not females. So, um, gosh, how do I even want to go from here? Well, let me just jump into it. What I'm about to talk about explains how Kevin Moore's persona as a geek or a techie or a nerd really does make him the best friend, metaphorically at least, to quite a few pimps who represent porn stars. The reason being is because, let's, let's really look at pimps here, okay, or madam. Let's really look at them. What is a pimp or a madam's ultimate objective? Their ultimate objective is to be able to book out the individuals that they represent to as high dollar of a client as possible. All right? So the pimps and the madams are consistently observing society and they're looking at, okay, who is really, who are the money makers in society right now? Now, in the past, it was, you, you know, like the energy or the oil industry, and it still kind of is today. So the clients that they represented reflected the sexual ideals of what guys in that industry desired. Like, let's think about who a... Um, Texas oil man might like. Well, he's going to like a girl that's like a, I don't know, a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. Therefore, you had pornography that reflected that. Debbie does Dallas. <laughs> and you had a lot of um, porn stars who worked double duty as prostitutes who would service these guys, who these guys could get in contact with and live out their Debbie does Dallas fantasy, okay? Now, as time has progressed, you started having a lot of guys in the Middle East, in the Dubai area, who suddenly attained a ton of money and became princes because, um, again, of the energy industry. You, you know, any industry that runs our world is going to attract money. So the guys out there, the, what, what, what seduces the... Middle Eastern Arab guys the most are the girls who are super duper American. Anything that has to do with pop culture in America, the guys from the Arab countries are like, wow, you know, and when they started attaining a lot of money and, you know, started becoming playboys, what was their ideal? Like the Pamela Anderson type, but even more so like the Britney Spears teen pop star kind of girl. So if you look like on the internet archive at the escort agency's rosters at that time, you see a ton of girls who are like Britney Spears, Brie Olson, for example, Avril Lavigne, uh, who else was, was hot? The Spice Girl types. You, you, you know, that that's that's who the guys who were representing the porn stars who were also prostitutes were heavily booking. But now things have changed. Who's really got a lot of money, a lot of expendable income in America right now? Silicon Valley guys, the tech guys, the, the, the super smart nerd geek kind of guys. And um, who do they want? Who do they want? Well, they get intimidated a little bit by the girl who's like your quintessential Hugh Hefner era playboy type model. They really do. It's And it's because when they were coming up through high school, you know, they were on their computers, you know, they go to school, they get bullied by, you know, the football jocks who ordained the cheerleader Pamela Anderson type. So, you know, they're thinking to themselves, oh, I can't get that kind of girl. And I don't even want to deal with that because that's going to make me have a flashback. And um, I'm never going to be able to get it up. <laughs> Seriously. 
what I'm saying is true here. So they want a girl who's hot and pretty, but they want a girl that they feel like they can relate to. So that stereotype has people have caught on to that in Hollywood and in the porn industry. There's quite a, let's look at Olivia Munn. I don't know if many people remember Olivia Munn. You see every once in a while. But her whole thing is, yeah, I'm hot. Yeah, I'm sexy. But I'm a nerd. Who else um, was really pushing that? Ooh, um, in the porn industry. Gosh, what's that girl's name? Ah, uh, Carrera. Carrera is her last name. Oh, I can't think of her first name right now. Asia. Asia Carrera. She's another one who her whole thing was all about, yeah, I'm hot, I'm sexy, but I'm real smart. I'm a nerd girl. And, you know, those Silicon Valley guys, they eat that up and they all want that. Who else was doing it? Well, who's doing it nowadays? Uh... Alana Evans, she's one. She was, she's trying to be the hot, sexy, um, milf cougar kind of girl, but she's a video gamer. Y you know, is she really? Mm, that's a little, that's, that's questionable. Some people have tried to disprove that she <laughs> really is not, but I think if she wants to be, she is. Uh, Mercedes Carrera, and look at that last name. She took that from Asia Carrera. But she's supposed to be one who's real smart. But she's not just nerd when it comes to tech stuff. She's nerd when it comes to politics, too. You know, she's trying to tap into that, that fan base. But what Kevin Moore has figured out is that it's not enough just for the porn star to say, like, yeah, I'm a sexy geek. That, that he took it a step further. He took it to where he's actually training. <laughs> he's, he's training the um, potential client base of the pimps exactly how to go about connecting with the prostitutes via every single different online venue that you can connect because that's what the hooker experience was and when i look at the persona that he projects he would actually be quite a comfortable type of individual for high dollar clients to reach out to and i'm talking about these high dollar tech clients to reach out to to facilitate these um, liaisons with porn stars that he may be able to connect them with. He is, from my perspective, only like one inch away from being the nerd, geek, techie type pimp. That's what he, that's what, how I view him. But here's where the danger is in all that, okay? Um, and, and one thing I do want to throw out there is Kevin Moore has another alias that he's been utilizing online for many years, and I don't know to what extent he's been utilizing it at or what his agenda has been with this, but he's also known as Dark Priest. I think that's important for people to remember because I was speaking with someone last night who also is a blogger and I'm not going to say who, but he didn't know about that. He didn't know about this dark priest persona, not at all. But here, like I said, there, there is some danger to this whole tech nerd geek kind of thing being, um, interlaced with the porn star prostitution world and it has to do with 
racism, misogyny, and homophobia. Okay, now again, let's look at the mentality of the guy who would be the um, millionaire techie type guy who wants to hire the uh, unassuming, geeky, <laughs> little nerdy, yet sexy porn girl for the weekend. Okay, now already he feels like, all right, this is a nerd girl. I can relate to her. She's like me. So I'm going to be able to get it up. But keep in mind, the guy who's a techie, he's always on the internet. So he's always researching everything he can about the porn industry and even this porn star in particular. And now that you have hate crimes such as porn WikiLeaks, right? There's a lot of disinformation being put out there in regards to porn stars being submitted or being subjected to high HIV risk situations, okay? In some cases, there's some truth to it, but in other cases, there's not. And it's created a lot of homophobia when it comes to the element of the crossover performer, and it's created a lot of racism, too when it comes to the stigmas attached to interracial porn. In other words, porn between a black or an African-American person and someone of another ethnicity, most commonly a Caucasoid or white person, all right? So you got these men going on these hate crime websites like porn WikiLeaks or whatever, and they're reading, they're reading, and they're like, because they want to read about the girl that they want to book as a prostitute. So they're reading about this porn star and they're like, oh no, this person who's posting on this website is saying that, the that we'll call it said porn star, uh, Jenna. They're saying that Jenna has worked with a crossover and they're calling this crossover a uh, quote unquote faggot and they're saying that he has HIV. So that's a problem. Maybe I shouldn't be with that porn star because I don't want to get HIV because if I, you know, I just, I was thinking that I was going to be able to live out exactly what Kevin Moore's character did in the hooker experience. So, you know, when I'm with this porn star I want to hire, I wasn't planning on using a condom because he didn't use one in, the, in his movie. And I want to be just like Kevin Moore, because he's like me, and he's a tech, and he's a pit, you know, he's a geek, and he's a nerd. He's like me, and I want to be like him, and I want to do my porn star without a condom. So I can't be with a porn star who's been with anyone who's considered a crossover, and maybe I shouldn't be with anyone who has um, done IR porn either, because from what I'm seeing on this hate crime website, they're, they're high risk HIV too. So that's what's going on in the client's head. So considering that guys like Kevin Moore really are such, so instrumental to these porn star escort pimps, you, you know, these porn star escort pimps, they're sitting there thinking, shit, <clears throat> here we are missing out on a whole bunch of money because we got these people who these porn stars who we've worked so hard to cultivate this nerd girl persona within, they're working with these guys who are viewed via you know, be it truthful or not, they are viewed as being with high risk HIV people. So what are we going to do? Well, we got to figure out how to get, how to segregate the porn industry. That's what we got to figure out how to do. And they've thought to themselves, well, we can't just openly say, okay, girls, Make it known that you don't want to work with any black people anymore because it's very intimidating to these tech clients we have, these tech guys. You know, already they're insecure because a lot of them have small penises. 
already, you know, that they're looking at the interracial porn and they're like, oh shit, how am I ever going to satisfy this porn star when I book her? Because she's used to having this big black C, <laughs> you, you know, so, and they're, they're already starting to get a little paranoid because we got these assholes running these hate crimes that are, you know, saying all kinds of bad stuff about black people. So what are we going to do? And so they think to themselves, okay, well, we got to make it seem like we're empowering the porn star when it comes to them openly saying that they don't want to work with people that the pimp doesn't want them to work with. So enter this new mantra. It's my body. It's my choice. And again, I do agree with that. Ideally, it should be everyone's choice who works in the porn industry as far as only working with who you're comfortable with working with. But that's the thing. That's the key. It's got to be who you are comfortable working with. It's got to be your thought process, porn stars. It shouldn't be your pimp's thought process. It shouldn't be some boyfriend or pimp behind you. Aurora Snow, she actually did quite the article about that in regards to addressing the racism in porn and why some girls don't like to do interracial. It's not because their mindsets half the time. It's because they got a boyfriend who doesn't want their white girlfriend with a, with a black guy. You deserve to be treated like gold. Because without you, there is no industry. This only exists because of you guys. That means respecting your choices. That means who you work with is up to you. It's your body. So they couldn't attack the blacks first because that's too politically incorrect, but it's easy to attack the gays. So when you look at a lot of this homophobia and a lot of this crossover hate in the porn industry, it's not coming from the porn stars, really. No, 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 no. It's not coming from the general populace even initially. No. It's coming from the pimps who represent porn stars who are prostitutes. So getting back to what I was saying before. So you got these pimps and they're trying to attract all these tech nerd and geek guys with all this Silicon Valley money and everything and all this money from the development of their apps and their software and you know whatever else it is that they're doing. And they're, and they're saying to themselves, okay, so what we're going to do is create a situation to where we have a figurehead, a mouthpiece, who the tech guys can relate to, who is going to make it clear to all the porn stars and even the world, the, the mainstream, world via mainstream media that it's okay to be with the porn stars that follow him so how do you separate how do you segregate the industry now to where you have a group of porn stars who are going to follow tech geek man, Kevin Moore. A situation is created to where he's able to have a platform and go before all of the industry and say, remember, it's your body. It's your choice. And who has been bullying? Allegedly. The person that I loved. And who died, allegedly, due to that bullying. 
the person that I loved and who was behind it. Allegedly. Well, he hasn't openly said it. But people who are supporting Kevin Moore blame the alleged bullying that his wife allegedly committed suicide over on a fictitious gay mafia. And who in the porn industry is connected to this fictitious gay mafia? The performers male, the male performers who work in the porn industry in its entirety. In other words, the alleged gay side and the straight side of the industry, but there's really no such thing. It's just one porn industry. But that's only step one or phase one of the pimp plan. So now you have a lot of performers, a lot of baby pimps and a lot of uh, other, and when I say baby pimp, I mean pimps in training. And, and, and just a lot of people in the industry who are like, yeah, this fictitious gay mafia, that's what, that's what the problem is. That's what's killing the porn stars. When in actuality, what's really, from my perspective at least, brought the tragic death to Mercedes Probowski was um, childhood abuse that she suffered and that no one really um, helped her with and the fact that she didn't have a support system that truly seemed to um, care about her when it came to that problem. But anyway, right now this fictitious gay mafia is to blame. So you have a lot of porn stars who are going to make it known that they will not work with these um, individuals who are male who work in gay porn and straight porn. All right. But like I said, that's only phase one. Now the next thing that's on the horizon, and this is where I want porn professionals who are black and African American that are performers to pay very, very close attention to. They're next. You black performers are next in regards to being segregated from the porn industry because it's already been in the works via lower wages, lower pay per scene. There's not very many of you. But the next thing that is going to be something that happens to where the porn stars that are being pimped to the tech nerd and geek guys is going to be something that happens to where it's acceptable for them to completely openly say it's my body it's my choice and i don't want to work with no nigga and i feel like that's already kind of in the works when it comes to the situation with mr marcus There hasn't been a big enough event to happen yet to where it can feasibly be done, but it's on the horizon. It's on the horizon. And this is, I want to talk a little bit more about the racism and whatnot when it comes to this high dollar client base of the pimps that work in the tech industry who consider themselves geeks and nerds and whatnot. Okay. A lot of these guys who are booking these porn stars, in other words, hiring them as prostitutes, they also subscribe to this men's rights activist, MRA, um, thing that's come about. A lot of them, they really look down upon women because they feel like they've been emasculated because they come from a place many times to where they were the kid who was picked on in school, but they suddenly, you, you know, figured out how to make money using technology and now they're getting their revenge, it, you know, so it, it really is like a revenge of the nerds kind of thing that the porn industry's pimps nowadays are feeding off of substantially when it comes to drawing quite 
a bit of money out of these guys. But uh, a lot of these guys, they, they're not just chauvinist pigs, but the, uh, there's a lot of what I consider recruiters who go into these men's rights activist forums who really uh, kind of feed into the misogyny and whatnot. And they recruit these guys from the men's rights activist forums into the white supremacist world. Because let's look at the, let's look at the demographics of who make up the high dollar Silicon Valley CEO tech tech industry who hires these porn stars. They're generally white males. Here and there, you got some Asian ones too. But they're generally white males. And a lot of them were not born at a time as progressive as they may think that they think. They weren't born at a time to where they really realized how dangerous white supremacist attitudes are. And nowadays, the white supremacy movement has some very charismatic faces. Richard Spencer. Does he look dangerous on the surface? No, but when you look at what he has to say, it's like freaking nightmare on Elm Street. Andrew Anglin, he's another one. And coincidentally, he's currently being represented by one of the porn industry's most um, prominent attorneys, by the way, who had ran down the legal group. He's another one. Um, within the porn world, Let's look at who is who spouts white supremacist attitudes. Donald Carlos Sion. He's another one. It, there, there is there is a commonality between these three guys, and I was talking about that yesterday. Uh, all three of these guys aren't just like, oh, we don't like other ethnic groups. We don't like brown people because they're taking our white women. No, 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 no. They're also into the Asian girls. In fact, all three have had extensive relationships with Asian women. But you know who else has? Kevin Moore. From what I could research, a girl named Veronica Lynn, or known as Veronica Lynn, and that happened right before he got with Mercedes Grabowski, a.k.a. August Ames. That, that, that tech geek nerd label, it's very readily and very rapidly cultivating. A white supremacist mindset as being viewed as okay and for many years the porn industry has reflected that supremacist mindset as being okay and it's not it's just not so um, I don't know if I explained all this correctly maybe I did maybe I didn't I know this webcast ended up being a little bit longer than I anticipated it to be but just considering that the um, adult entertainment industry does appeal to many people's or just just one of our most rudimentary emotions which is our you know what turns us on what we find sexy you know our sexuality that's something that all of us embody no matter who we are as a human being being that ties into that it's very influential when it comes to our mindsets and it's very influential when it comes to how we relate to one another as human beings and how we view or value one another as human beings. So, you know, this whole geek, nerd, techie thing, the way that it's really promoting the idea that just like you can order a pizza on demand, you can order a girl on demand, that's dangerous. And that's the mentality that you got Kevin Moore embedding into, and purposefully so, embedding into so many powerful, wealthy individuals' minds. And that, going back to what I said, and that's how I'll close this webcast, going back to what I said at the beginning of this webcast, it's really affecting how a lot of women who are the peers of these 
of these guys who uh, hire these nerd geek tech techie kind of girl porn stars is really affecting their lives because they're having problems finding a regular relationship or dating because you got these guys who are like why am I gonna put the effort into making a regular relationship with a girl when all I gotta do is go to a website along the lines of the hooker experience website in Kevin Moore's movie and just go to the app if they have an app I'm sure that's next. If they could get away with it, they already would. But let me just, you know, pick out what girl I want. And bam, I got my sex. And plus, on top of that, she's going to act the part of the girlfriend that I desire without me having to actually get into a relationship. So Kevin Moore has really fucked things up for some of the women that I talk to on a routine basis who work in that tech industry and who cannot manage to find a boyfriend in their world. Yeah. Yeah. And that's sad. That's sad. That's sad that people would rather hire a um, actress to play the part of what they desire than actually go after the real thing. All right, that's about it for today. It was a little longer than I thought, but I got other work to do and other things to do. So uh, see you later. Hopefully at some point I'll get this up on YouTube also. Bye.